hey everyone um good day um so today we're moving on in our metabolic pathway course metabolic pathway course and then we're going deeper i'm going into now more of aspects more aspects of this metabolism of amino acids in the body now which is indirectly almost like metabolism of proteins in the body since um, amino acids are the building blocks of proteins actually now we're going to the metabolic pathway proper or here we'll be talking about in this video we'll be talking about the urea cycle and also the fates um we'll be, we'll be touching the fate of the fate of these amino acids the fate of these amino acids after the amino group has been removed we'll just be touching that to get a brief knowledge on that yeah to get a brief knowledge of that and some other things we'll be talking about so yeah let's let's get into what we have for today so now um we're talking about the fate um the fate of the carbon skeleton of amino acids so now these amino acids um proteins when they are taken into body broken down to amino acids which are their building blocks now these amino acids the amino group is removed and ammonia is formed ammonia is seen to be toxic to the body so now it has to be converted to a less toxic substance which is with a less toxic substance that can easily be excreted from the body so that there's no it doesn't cause harm to the body system so now this ammonia is then converted to urea which is less toxic and is water soluble and water soluble substance um or water soluble compounds tend to be excreted faster and better from the body now when this amino group is removed we are then left to the carbon skeleton which can also be called the alpha keto acid or just the keto acid now this keto acid has different fates in the body system it can either be converted converted into intermediate of the tca cycle or converted to pyruvate or it can also be converted to acetyl a or it can also be converted to keto bodies um, which is formed from the acetyl 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 a now the fate of of this carbon skeleton amino acids the carbon skeleton are converted to intermediate of the tca cycle or pyruvate are called or termed as glu glucogenic now examples of this glucogenic um glucogenic amino acids we have aspartate and aline and aline and um, transamination occurs um and aspartate is converted to oxaloacetate and the transamination also occurs for alanine and um pyruvate is formed now amino acids that their carbon skeleton is converted or changed to um acetyl a are called ketogenic are called ketogenic now examples we have like um, lysine and leucine now there are some amino acids that their carbon skeleton after the removal of the amino group they can either be converted to um, intermediate of the tca cycle or pyruvate or even to acetyl a so examples of these amino acids we have phenyl aniline and tyroxine they are converted to intermediate of the tca cycle they can bear them be oxidized by the tca cycle to form um carbon dioxide water and energy it can also um enter the gluconeogenesis pathway to form glucose or this acetyl a can enter can enter the tca cycle or can go on to form fatty acids so now let's go into the um urea cycle now urea cycle is um, a, a process that involve that is a five-step process involving five enzymes and it happens in the liver if it happens in the liver then you can see it happens in the liver cells and then the liver cells you can call them hepatocytes so now you can simply say urea cycle occurs in hepatocytes so now and then in the hepatocytes um the cycle cut across it or it cut across um one organelle and the cytosol which is the mitochondria and the cytosol of the um liver cell the cycle starts from the mitochondria so now what happens in the mitochondria is ammonia is conjugated with carbon dioxide to form carbamoyl phosphates carbamoyl phosphates and this reaction uses 2 atp 2 atp is broken down or is hydrolyzed to form 2 2 adp 2 adp and the enzyme that catalyzes the reaction catalyzes this reaction is carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1 so this is a condensation reaction of ammonia and carbon 2 oxide now after this carbamoyl phosphate is formed the carbamoyl group is transferred to on the thing um to form citrulline to form citrulline now this reaction is catalyzed by onidine transcarbomerylase now the first reaction i just talked about the formation of the carbomeryl phosphate now it's allosterically regulated and is the rate limiting step without the formation of this carbomeryl phosphate um the urea cycle won't proceed so it needs to be formed now this citrulline then um reacts with aspartic acid i can call it aspartate to form 
adenosulfonate adenosulfonate or these steps form um, a carbon to nitrogen bond so now this is how urea gets its second nitrogen and the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is adenosulfonate synthetase now this this um, enzyme is a ligase cause under our enzymology course where we talked about classification of enzymes and all that um adenosulfonate synthetase is a ligase now the next reaction is adenosulfonate it forms adenine and fumarate adenine and fumarate now this reaction here is catalyzed by um adenosulfonase okay now this react this um enzyme is a lyase it acts to cleave it's cleaving a bond and we have adenine and fumarate now this fumarate is then um taken or is moved into the uh, mitochondria where it enters the TCA cycle and then converted to malate, converted to oxaloacetate, and this oxaloacetate can then be transaminated again to form as aspartate. To form aspartate, fumarate inhibits adenosulfonase. That means it inhibits the enzyme that form. It inhibits the enzyme that that aids in its formation in the cytosol from the urea cycle. So now that is part of the regulation, and now the urea cycle is linked to the TCA cycle, which is the Krebs cycle, we can call it that also, which is linked to the Krebs cycle by fumarate. Now, the arginine that was formed is then converted to urea and onidine, and then this um, reaction is catalyzed by an arginase, and then this also relies. So now, urea is formed, urea that is formed is taken to the kidney and excreted from the body, and then onidine continues in the reaction and then reacts with the carbamoyl phosphate continues the reaction and reacts with um the carbon moil phosphate again to, to form citrulline and the urea cycle continues again and now this urea cycle it can also be called krebs henslet cycle so yeah that is all for urea cycle well now this urea cycle can actually be regulated the first reaction which is the formation of the carbon moil phosphate um that is catalyzed by the enzyme carbon moil phosphate synthetase one this enzyme is um actually allosterically regulated by n by n acetyl N acetyl glutamate, which is formed from acetyl CoA and glutamate. Now, N acetyl glutamate is a positive effector, which means it binds to an allosteric enzyme to increase its catalytic activity. Allosteric enzymes are enzymes that actually contain a region or they have a region where your regulatory molecule can actually be bound, can bind to. This regulatory molecule could either be a positive or a negative effector. And lastly, arginine is also an activator of. Um, NAG synthase and NAG synthase is what catalyzes the reaction catalyzes the reaction between glutamate and acetyl A to form N acetyl um, glutamate. Yeah, and that is the end for today's video. Thank you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.